I'm going to go over special right triangles today. This is something that you should have done in middle school um, whenever you would have covered eighth grade math. So my freshmen, that would have been in seventh grade, and then my sophomores, that would have been in eighth grade. Um, but you don't spend very long on it, and you don't go into the depth that we do. But it is something you should have seen before. So first of all, there are 45, 45, 90 triangles. And that is found by taking the diagonal of a square, and it forms two congruent isosceles triangles. And what happens is um, it gives you this ratio um, where, and we're going to solve this using um, similar triangles. It just makes it easier. So this side would be 1, this side would be 1, and this side would just be the square root of 2. So that's your ratio. So it'll be 1. 1 to the square root of 2 for the hypotenuse. So whenever we work these problems, we're going to create the triangle right next to it. So it's always the hypotenuse. That's the square root of 2. This is the hypotenuse. So that means this will be my square root of 2, and then these will be my 1s. So in order to solve this problem, the easiest way to do it is by using similar triangles. So 6 over x is going to equal 1 over the square root of 2. And when that happens, 1 times x is just x, and 6 times the square root of 2 is 6 square roots of 2. Now there is a pattern <clears throat> to this so you could know that whatever the legs are, they're both going to be the same. So this would also be 6. And then to get the hypotenuse, you always multiply it times the square root of 2. So you could have done it that way just by patterns. It just kind of depends if you recognize the pattern every time or not. And 45, 45, 90s are easier, but in a minute we're going to do 30, 60, 90s, and those are a lot more complicated. So if you're ever in doubt, always set up we are going to call this our formula triangle right next to it and do um, similar triangles. So my hypotenuse is always the square root of 2. And then my legs are always 1. So to solve for x, we're going to do x over 5 square roots of 2 is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. So cross multiply, you end up with the square root of 2 times x is equal to 1 times anything is just itself, so 5 square roots of 2. We need to get that square root of 2 away from x. So these cancel, these square roots of 2 cancel, and x is just 5. Again, if you wanted to do the pattern, you could say that both of the legs have to be the same, and then the hypotenuse is the leg with the square root of 2 by it. So if it's the leg with the square root of 2 by it, then 5 is our leg. So it just depends whichever way you happen to see easier. Do it that way. This is where it becomes a little bit more complicated. Um, because we're going to have to deal with multiple square roots. So always draw the same triangle. Both of these up above or oriented the same, but you always want to draw your formula triangle, like as I like to call it, um, oriented the same way as the problem triangle. Your hypotenuse is always the square root of 2, and then your legs are always 1. Set up your proportions, so 18 square roots of 3 over x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. 1 times x is x, and this is 18 square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which remember um, from whenever we first started this unit, whenever you have two square roots by each other, they're just multiplied. So 3 times 2 is 6. And then again for my pattern people. So remember to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, you just multiply times the square root of 2. So you would have had 18 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, and that would have given you 18 times the square root of 6 for my pattern people. Again, if you don't understand that, that's fine. Just do um, your formula triangle and do ratios. 
So my hypotenuse will always be the square root of 2. My legs will always be 1s. And then we will solve this way. So 18 over x is equal to the square root of 2 over 1. Cross multiply. You have the square root of 2 times that x is equal to 18. Divide by the square root of 2. But if you remember um, from the first day that we started this, you cannot have a square root in the denominator. We have to get it out. So you multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 2 to get it out of the denominator. That gives me 18 square roots of 2 on top, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which gives me a 2 on the bottom. Then this reduces. 18 divided by 2 is 9 square roots of 2. Okay, pattern people, if you want to do the pattern. So to get from here to here, basically what you're doing is dividing by the square root of 2. That's exactly what we did up here. To get from here to here, we divided by the square root of 2. So 5 square roots of 2 divided by the square root of 2, that cancels, and you just end up with 5. It was just faster to tell you that the number that is with the square root of 2 is what the sides are. But whenever you're dealing with a number that doesn't have a square root of 2 with it, you are literally dividing by the square root of 2. So you would do 18 divided by the square root of 2, and then again, do all this stuff that we did down here. <clears throat> or set up your formula triangle and go from there. Find the length of the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we have to find the length of the hypotenuse. We don't know what this is. With a leg length of 14 centimeters. So draw your formula triangle. Your hypotenuse is always the square root of 2. Everything else is 1. Set up your ratios. You have 14 over x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. Cross multiply. That's x and 14 square roots of 2. Oh, and it's centimeters. Okay, pattern people. Again, to go from leg to hypotenuse, you multiply times square root of 2. Or in other words, you just put a square root of 2 at the end of it. So 14 square roots of 2. All right, so if you're a pattern person and you did all of this with, by the pattern, this will become a lot more complicated. This pattern, it has one, it's just harder. Um, so 30, 60, 90 triangles are um, the altitude of, they're created by using the altitude of an equilateral triangle, creating two um, congruent 30, 60, 90 triangles. So the ratios for these, again, I'm going to replace all these x's with 1's. So this is 1, my hypotenuse is 2, and this is the square root of 3. So um, your hypotenuse is always the 2. And, and this is what will help my pattern people. So my hypotenuse will be 2. Across from my smallest angle, so across from my 30, is my... 1. And then across from my 60 is my square root of 3. So um, your ratios are 1, square root of 3, and 2 for all of your sides. All right, so I will still set up my formula triangle. Across from my hypotenuse is 2 with 30, 60, 90s. Across from my 60 is my square root of 3. And then across from my 30 is my 1. So to solve for x, we're going to use this ratio. Actually, I'm going to do it in a different color so that you can see. So we're going to do x over 8 is equal to square root of 3 over 1. Cross multiply, and you have x is equal to 8 square roots of 3. And then for your y's, you do the same thing. y over the square root of 8 is equal to 2 over 1. Cross multiply, y is equal to 8 times 2, which is 16. Okay, pattern people. 
the patterns are always easiest if you are dealing with your short side. So in other words, the side across from your 30 degree angle, which is this one. So if you're moving from your short side to get to your hypotenuse, you always multiply times 2, which is how we got 16 for y. To get to your middle side or your longer leg, you multiply times the square root of 3, which gave us 8 square roots of 3. Now that's moving from the short side. It's always easier to do it if you know your short side. And number seven, we don't. And so it makes it a little bit more complicated for my pattern people to the point that you may just want to do it like this. Across from um, the 90 degree angle is my hypotenuse, and that is always two. Um, across from my 30 degree angle, and I'm getting that from this, right? Because they're similar triangles. They should have the same angle measures. So across from 30 is my 1, and then across from my 60, or the one that's left, is my square root of 3. So x will be 11 over x is equal to 2 over 1. Cross multiply, I have 2x is equal to 11 times 1 is 11, divide by 2, and x is 5 and a half. And then for my y's, I do 11 over y is equal to 2 over square root 3. Cross multiply, 2y is equal to 11 times square root of 3. Divide by 2. And y is 5.5 square roots of 3. All right. Pattern people. Now remember I told you it's going to be harder if you don't know your small side. So it's always easier to go with your small side. And you always go in reverse. So because we multiplied this way by 2, we're going to divide this way by 2. So divide by 2 to get my short side, which would be 5.5. And then because I know my short side to get to my longer leg or my medium side, you still multiply times square root of 3. So moving to the short side, you divide. Moving from the short side, you multiply. So this would give me 5.5 square roots of 3. All right, for number 8, formula triangle, my hypotenuse is always 2. Across from my 30 will always be my 1. And then across from my 60 will always be my square root of 3. So for x, we have x over 9 square roots of 3 is equal to 1 over square root of 3. So cross multiply, you have the square root of 3 times x is equal to 1 times anything is itself, so 9 square roots of 3. Divide by the square root of 3 on both sides. Those square roots of 3's cancel, these square roots of 3's cancel, and x is just 9. And then for y, it's y over 9 square roots of 3 is equal to 2 over the square root of 3. Cross multiply, and you have the square root of 3 times y is equal to 9 times 2 is 18 square roots of 3. Divide by the square root of 3 on both sides. These square roots of 3's cancel. These square roots of 3's cancel. So y is 18. All right. Pattern people. Remember, we always need to know our short side first. So from here, to get to our short side, we always divide. So you divide by the square root of 3. 9 square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3 cancels, and it just gives us 9. And then any time that you know your short side, you multiply. So times 2 gives you 18 for y. Number 9. Our hypotenuse is always 2. Across from our 60 is always the square root of 3. And across from our 30 is always 1. 
So for our x, we do x over 12 is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. Cross multiply, square root of 3 times x is equal to 12. Divide by the square root of 3 on both sides. But remember, we cannot leave the square root of 3 in a denominator. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. That gives me 12 square roots of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. And then this will reduce to 4 square roots of 3. And then for our y's, you do y over 12. Is equal to 2 times the square root of 3. Cross multiply. You have square root of 3 times y is equal to 12 times 2 is 24. Divide by the square root of 3 on both sides. Remember, you cannot leave the square root of 3 in the denominator, so multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. You have 24 square roots of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So this reduces to be 8 square roots of 3. All right, pattern people. We always need our small side first. And to get to our small side, you always divide. In this case, by the square root of 3. So 12 divided by the square root of 3 gives you the same process we did here. And you would just follow that same process. And it would give you 4 square roots of 3. Then to get from here to here, you always multiply times 2. And 4 times 2 is 8 square roots of 3. Again, if you do not understand the patterns, that's fine. Set up the formula triangle and do similar triangles. All right, this one says an equilateral triangle has an altitude of 36 centimeters. Remember, this is a 60 because equilateral triangles all have 60 degree angles. And then this one will be my 30 because it's split in two. Determine the length of the side of the equilateral. So we got to figure out how long this is. Okay, so really you don't need this part of it. That's the only part that you need because that's my 30, 60, 90 triangle. I would draw my formula triangle next to it. My hypotenuse is always two. Across from my 30 is always one. And across from my 60 is always the square root of three. So if I'm solving for the side, I only have to do one setup. So this way, oops, and this way. X over 36 is equal to 2 over the square root of 3. Cross multiply, we have the square root of 3 times X is equal to 2 times 36, which is 72. Divide by the square root of 3 on both sides. We cannot leave the square root of 3 in the denominator, so multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3. It gives me 72 square roots of 3 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which gives me 3. This will reduce. 3 goes into 7 once, and 3 goes into 12 four times, and then the square root of 3. And these are centimeters. And we're done with your notes.